Our prearranged non-small cell lung cancer uh, represents a distinct sub set of patients with non-small cell lung cancer, uh, representing about three to 5% of all non-squamous non-small cell lung cancers. Alcohol rearranged non-small cell lung cancer patients have the distinct uh, qualification of uh, really having very long overall survival. In fact, one uh, series has reported five-year overall survival percentages of around 60%. Uh, and, you know, these are patients that have stage four disease. So we must really carefully select these patients and select therapies uh, that may help us achieve that overall survival percentage. Uh, we now have several agents available for the treatment of our rearranged non-small cell lung cancer, namely five very active drugs, uh, some of which are first generation. Uh, the most um, widely used are the second generation ALK TKIs, namely Alectinib and Brigatinib. And then, of course, we have the third generation ALK TKI, Lorlatinib, which is also available. Uh, ALK rearranged uh, non-small cell lung cancers also have a higher predilection uh, for the CNS. So when I'm choosing frontline therapy, it's very important for me to choose something that's well tolerated, has demonstrated efficacy, but also has CNS penetration. So as I mentioned to you before, or the uh, top two drugs that are sort of used now are electinib and brigatinib, which have both shown in large phase three trials to have superior PFS compared to crizotinib, and in fact have uh, demonstrated intracranial response rates of uh, about 78 to 81%. They each have um, a slightly distinct adverse event profile. Um, I think uh, we must remember that there are cases of pulmonary toxicity that are seen with brigatinib, and electinib can cause LFT abnormalities as well as some nausea. So I think distinct side effect profiles that must be kept in mind. But behind them are, again, large phase three trials that support the uh, use of each of them. We do know that uh, at some point in time, um, you know, progression is going to happen, even though we know that median progression-free survivals are quite long for these patients. But now we have uh, lorlatinib, which is FDA approved for the management of these patients upon progression. We also know that lorlatinib is pretty active against most resistance mutations that come up after a second generation TKI has been used, the most common of which is the G1202R mutation. Um, lorlatinib is especially um, uh, effective when patients have the, this mutation. So um, I do think that we have now effective first and second line choices. Uh, do I use liquid biopsies or biopsies upon progression? Um, I personally do. Uh, there is very um, robust data to sort of suggest that in the presence of certain activating mutations, lorlatinib may be more effective. And there are also certain mutations where crizotinib may be more effective. Lastly, I would like to uh, say that uh, chemotherapy is uh, really a very good choice for patients with ALK rearranged non-small cell lung cancer. In fact, there was a small retrospective series that was published um, earlier this year in JTO that showed that if uh, platinum-based, pamitrexid-based uh, platinum doublet is used, uh, we can achieve um, sufficient response rate and a progression-free survival that would be uh, nice to achieve in the third line or beyond setting. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, my summary of ALK rearranged non-small cell lung cancer. And I think I would just like to underscore that it's really important to look out for these mutations with the use of molecular-based testing.